Hey guys, Middle Jesus here. Now I love collecting for the PlayStation 2, but I've never really gotten into collecting PAL games, quite frankly, because they're pretty hard to find all the way over here in Seattle. Well, thanks to a viewer on my channel who lives in Finland, they donated a stack of PAL games that we never got in North America. And I wanna share those with you today because there's a bunch of really interesting stuff in here that I'd never seen before, and it covers almost every genre. So let's take a look. going to start off with Masters of the Universe. He-Man, he Defender he of Grayskull. So I guess this is a sequel to a Game Boy Advance game that we got back in 2002. So it's kind of weird that a sequel would be PAL only on the PlayStation 2. Although I guess in North America a release was planned at some point, but maybe the game bombed? I have no idea. So as you can see by the footage, this is a third-person action-adventure game featuring most of Mattel's popular characters from the He-Man franchise. I guess this was considered a budget title when released, but I do think it's got some pretty decent graphics, don't you think? And as you can tell by the footage here, it plays very much like a hack and slash with some light puzzle solving in the form of finding keys to open doors, stuff like that. It's got some pretty simple controls, which has you bringing the beat down on all sorts of baddies. But you do unlock and learn additional combos as the game goes on. Now, the controls are a bit stiff, and moving He-Man around the environment does feel a bit awkward at times. Now's a good time to mention that I'm not suggesting that every game in this video is necessarily a hidden gem. As you'll see, some games are good and others are uh, downright terrible. But fans of He-Man don't have a lot of selection. There's not a ton of these games made and this is a good one. I like it. Here is Yakuza Fury. Now this is a beat-em-up that is often referred to as a River City Ransom clone. In this game, you play a dude who's trying to rescue his girlfriend from thugs. Yeah, certainly not the most original premise of a video game. And as you can see by the gameplay footage, you make your way through the levels, beating the tar out of waves and waves of baddies. Now you're gonna use your fists, you're gonna use your feet, and eventually pick up some weapons. And then once you beat the foes, they'll kind of blink away and leave you some money, you know, as they do. Now this is not the deepest game, but it does offer some character customization and has multiple endings. So it encourages you to play through it multiple times. Actually, it reminds me a little of that quirky Kenka Bancho badass rumble game that's on the PSP. Remember that? Yeah, that's what this kind of feels like a little bit, which is, you know, kind of cool. Here is Glass Rose. So this is an adventure slash survival horror game that also came out in Japan. But the cool thing is, PAL got a port of it with full English subtitles and voices. You play a modern young guy who travels to a mysterious mansion with your lady friend and end up warping back to 1929 in an attempt to solve a murder mystery that seems to span a couple decades. This game feels very much like a traditional PC adventure style game, including the ability to control the pointer like a mouse, although in this case you use the thumbstick, and then you select objects around the room to further the story, plus you'll pick up objects you need to solve puzzles and help provide clues as to what the heck is going on. And this game has a really interesting and unique dialogue system when you're talking to people, where you actually highlight spoken words and then you can ask for clarification. Thankfully, the game helps you out by highlighting certain words that should have responses from the person that you're talking to. But man, it just feels kind of clunky and it's ultimately not really necessary. I mean, they should have just made it sort of clickable to begin with. Also, there's a timer that's constantly ticking down in this game, which is not really one of my favorite things because again, in adventure games, you like to take your time and kind of explore. So I don't know, there's definitely a sense of urgency in this game, but that's not one of my favorite features. But this is a good choice for people looking for more Japanese-centric gothic horror games mixed in with a little bit of that traditional PC-style adventure. So it's kind of cool. You know, definitely check it out if you find it. 
Here's a bit of a weird one. This is called Sniper Assault. And originally, based on that name, I thought this was gonna be having you play as a sniper, but instead, you are actually a guy that is trying to shoot at snipers that are hiding in windows and also hiding behind like boxes and cars and stuff. And this kind of plays a little bit like a Lycan game, except for it's not, you play with the controller. Now what's weird is that you can move your character left and right, as well as you can quick dodge if you need to, but the moment that you start firing, your character's locked in place, which means that you need to watch out for those little red circles. That shows where the enemy bullets are gonna hit. So you're basically dodging back and forth, and then you pause, and then you try to shoot out as many people as you can in the windows and in the background. It's definitely a lot of risk versus reward. Originally, I thought this game was pretty dumb when I first started playing it. I, I really did. But, you know, as I started getting into it and started going through the levels, actually, I kind of got the hang of it. I mean, it definitely feels like a budget title. It's not great by any means. And it probably would be more at home, say, on your smartphone. But honestly, it's not terrible. Oh yeah, love these games. Okay, so this is 1945, one and two, and these are two excellent, I mean, excellent arcade shoot 'em ups Now they also came out on the PS2 in Japan, but for some reason, they didn't come out in North America on the PlayStation 2, it's really weird. And as you can tell by my voice, it's a real bummer too, because these really are some of my favorite vertical shooters that I keep coming back to time and time again. They're very enjoyable. I mean, they got great graphics, really tight controls. Also, they have multiple difficulty levels, which is great because anybody can have fun with these games, regardless of your skill level. Eventually, we did get this compilation just recently on the Switch. So if you have a Switch and you wanna play these games, I highly recommend that you pick up that version, you know, if you're not collecting for the PS2. Miami Vice. This seems so weird to me that PAL Territories got an official Miami Vice game based on the popular 1980s show, not the modern remake. I mean, this show was huge in North America. I remember watching it as a kid, yet this game never came out anywhere else. As you can see here by the gameplay footage, you play in the third person and it's very much a cover-based shooter. I would compare it to, say, the Siphon Filter series. And since it is based on the classic TV show, you got Tubbs and Sonny Crockett here, as well as the rest of the gang. Right off the bat, some of the complaints I have about this is that the controls are just very clunky. Also, controlling the character is very slippery. But you'll see here that the graphics are pretty decent, um, although I never actually got past the first level <laughs> because I kept dying. So if you've made it further in this game, please let me know if it's worth the time or not. Also, I need to know if Phil Collins' In the Air Tonight song is in this game, because that's really important. Space Invaders Invasion Day. So here's a game that we technically did get, but we just didn't get it on the PlayStation 2. We got a version on the GameCube, but I wanted to include it in this video because technically we didn't get it on the PS2 and not everyone has a GameCube. This is a modern update to the classic Space Invaders arcade game that we played back in, what was it, the late 70s or early 80s? But now there is a full story mode and Obviously, as you can see here, much better graphics and technically a third person view. Like the original, there are waves of enemies to shoot, but basically the gameplay is pretty much the same. Although, as you can see, the graphics are definitely much improved. Now, I know what you're thinking, and I thought the same thing too. This game looks kind of lame. It might be kind of boring, but trust me, when you start playing this game and getting through some of the initial levels, the enemies get really varied in their attack patterns. For instance, some of the enemies will rush you, some of them will take multiple shots to kill, also some will dodge your attacks, and the game starts mixing in those different types of enemies, so you really, you really have to stay on your toes. But I'll be honest, I mean, this is kind of a tedious game, very much like the original arcade version. It's gonna be cool for some people and maybe not so much for others, but I do think it is a nice update if you like some of those simple arcade shooters from the 80s. Definitely check it out. Ah! 
Agent Hugo Lamoon Twist. Lamoon. So I'm gonna be completely honest, here is a game character that I had not heard of before, and when I started working on this video, I was quite surprised to learn that this Hugo character, who I guess is a troll, I have no idea, but I guess he's super popular around the world with over 30 video games under his belt so far. I mean, where have I been? This particular game is the first one I've ever played and it looks and plays a lot like the first Crash Bandicoot games, kind of where you're running along a 3D path, jumping over pits and exploding boxes, plus you're attacking critters that want to hurt you. And in this game, you're collecting lemons, or maybe it should be lemons. But yeah, this game definitely feels very similar to Crash Bandicoot, although admittedly not quite as good. I mean, the level design here is fine, but the gameplay definitely feels a little slower, a little sluggish, and overall, it just doesn't feel as polished. It's not a bad game, but it's not great either. Here is Evil Twin Cyprian's Chronicles. Cyprian, I, I hope I'm saying that right. This game was originally developed and announced for the Sega Dreamcast, which is kind of cool, but ultimately it never came out there, so instead it eventually made its way to the PlayStation 2 in PAL territories. You play a grumpy and kind of emo orphan that finds himself summoned to a strange world to help his friends solve some mysteries of uh, some kind. Honestly, this intro went on and on and on. I. I ended up spacing out, I'm gonna be honest with you. But once we finally got into gameplay, well, I immediately saw just how much time and energy went into making this, and it has a really unique style. And as you can see here, it plays very much like those 3D platforming games of the era, similar to Ratchet and & Clank and Jack and & Daxters of the time. And for the most part, it plays pretty well. I like how it's got this kind of darker horror theme going on. It's not something that you typically see in this genre. Now, admittedly, I've only got a couple hours into this game, only a couple levels, but it's definitely one I see myself coming back to and seeing where this game ultimately leads. I mean, it, it's just different enough to really kind of stand out. Ugh. Okay, well, remember in the beginning of this video when I mentioned that some of these games aren't necessarily hidden gems or games that I would recommend you check out? Well, how do I make this any clearer? Please don't, for the love of God and all things holy in this world, do not buy this game. Now, let me be clear. I don't mind the occasional budget title. Sometimes there's a lot of fun to be had with a game that only costs a few bucks and you get a laugh or two and then you just kind of move on with your day. This is not one of those times. This game sucks. Yeah. If you're not familiar with Little Britain, it's a popular British comedy TV show. One that I've seen a couple episodes and it's definitely, you know, it's got some funny moments. And this game here is a series of mini games, I guess, based on that. This first mini game here has you roller skating through this obstacle course, trying to collect CDs. Again, I don't know the reference because I've only seen you know a tiny portion of this show, but here's the problem. The controls are sluggish. It's so easy to crash and hit things. It's not even funny. It's, it's annoying. And the game is trying to pad out the length by making you play through this level way longer than you would want to. I mean, I'm a pretty easygoing guy. It takes a lot to, uh, to get me kind of riled up, but I found myself getting angry with this game. I wanted to smash my controller. It was so bad. And I'll be honest, I have no idea if the other mini games in this are any good, but based on the reviews I saw, I think we're pretty lucky that we didn't get this game in North America. Yeah, it's that bad. <laughs> So that's a quick look at some PlayStation 2 PAL games that we didn't get in the US. Now I actually have a bunch more to show you, an entire other stack. So if you like this video and you wanna see more, please let me know down in the comments below. Also, I wanna give a huge shout out to my buddy Reggie. I borrowed his PlayStation 3 test system and that's the reason why I was able to play these games and also capture the footage. 
Also, some of the games in this video are actually his, so he let me borrow a couple of these as well. Love to know what you guys think down in the comments below. As always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing, and take care.